The challenging part in developing a spreadsheet to model the member stresses in a clamped system is precisely what's illustrated in this diagram, and that is the geometric frustum goes between the top side and bottom side and has a geometric midpoint that does not necessarily coincide with the thicknesses of the components that are placed between the top of the bolt and the top of the nut on the bottom side. And so you have to sort out however many frustum components components there happen to be, and you have to figure out the Ds for all of them. So you can see that D2 for the washer, D3 for component E3 is down here, and then you have to figure out on the bottom side what all of these Ds are as well. So when I build my spreadsheet, I think of two plates and two washers, and that means there's a possibility for five different segments in this overall frustum system. Why? There's a top washer, there's a frustum in the top plate, there's a frustum that goes between the potential interface between the two plates and the midpoint of the geometric frustum. There's a frustum that goes down to the bottom of the second plate, and there can be a washer as well. So there are five different components, all of which require you to determine the thickness of each of those components as you move down through the frustum, and the top side diameter of all of the frustums as you move from washer to top plate to middle segment to bottom plate to bottom washer. Each of those has to be assigned an elastic modulus. And from that elastic modulus, we plug into the equation 820 over here. And then we calculate the Ks for each of those using the thickness and the diameter that we have calculated for this table. Calculate all the Ks, take the sum of the 1 over Ks and invert it, and it gives us an overall member stiff. So that's what we have to do. Now, in this particular case, as shown in this diagram here, we have a steel plate that has a washer above it and a bolt with a nut on the bottom. The steel plate is clamped to a cast iron plate, no washer on the bottom. So when I look at all of my inputs, I'm doing this in English units, I have a top washer, a top plate, and a bottom plate. So my bottom washer, I'm going to put it with the thickness of zero, and it does a recalculation for me. Now, I have decided to assign an elastic modulus to each of those components. The top washer is steel with 30 MPSI, top plate is steel, 30 MPSI, bottom plate, cast iron with 14.5 MPSA. The bottom washer, if I had one, would be 30 MPSI. Again, a steel washer. Okay, so the overall grip length, when I add these things up, appears here. In this case, it's 1.345. Okay, and the half grip length, which is an important quantity because I need to look at the half grip length over here on this diagram, and I need to see whether or not I have moved past the interface when I hit the mid geometric midpoint of the frustum. Now, before I go do the, the frustum spring constants, let's just do the bolt spring constants. In order to get the bolt spring constants, we need to know the overall length of the bolt. We need to know the nominal diameter of the bolt. So here's the bolt length as an input. Here's the bolt diameter. In this case, I'm saying I'm putting a half inch diameter bolt of length 1.5 inches through these two plates. It's a steel bolt, so it has 30 MPSI elastic modulus. I can calculate the threaded length from the overall bolt length by using using this equation here. So that threaded length would just be twice the nominal diameter plus a quarter inch. And I have this bolt diameter in here. My threaded length turns out to be 1.25 using this equation over here. So I have a condition in there. If you look carefully up here at the top of the spreadsheet, you will notice that I have an if statement. If the bolt length is less than, then the threaded length is twice the bolt diameter plus 0.25. If not, that means it's greater than six inches. The bolt the threaded length is twice the diameter plus one half inch. So the other thing I have to do since I calculated the grip length is I need to figure out what the threaded length is in the grip and what the unthreaded length is in the grip. Well, we know that if the overall length is one and a half inches and one and a quarter inches of that is threaded, then the unthreaded length is going to be a quarter inch. So I have an equation that tells me length of the bolt minus the threaded length that's in uh, cell B17 gives me threaded length length in the grip. I calculate the threaded length from equation 813. I use the grip length in a moment, but before I go to that, I'm going to say if I know that my threaded length is one and a quarter, my overall length is 1.5, then my unthreaded length is going to be 0.25. So I just take the bolt length and subtract from it the threaded length. That gives me the unthreaded length, and it's going to be embedded in the grip. 
after finding the unthreaded length in the grip, I find the threaded length in the grip. I simply take the grip length and subtract from that unthreaded length in the grip. Now that we have all of the basic particulars of the thread, we simply calculate the nominal area and we look up the threaded area for the particular bolt diameter we're using. We plug those things into equation 817 down here and we calculate the bolt stiffness from that. And in this case, you can see what our bolt stiffness is. 3.69 times 10 to the 6 pounds per inch. Now it's time to look at the logic that we're using to determine the thicknesses of all the plates that make up the five individual components. First thing we'll do is look at the thickness of segment one. That is the top washer. And you see that that's just equal to the top washer thickness, which is something that I input over here in cell B6. So that's my top washer thickness. Okay, thickness of the next component. Well, we got an if statement in here because there's a logic that's required. If the sum of the washer and top plate thickness is less than half the grip length, then the top plate thickness is equal to segment two thickness. Otherwise, the top plate thickness would be equal to half the grip length minus the washer thickness. When you go to segment three, I have another if statement. If T1, that is the thickness of the washer, plus T2 is less than the half grip length, then the thickness of the third layer would be equal to the half grip minus the steel plate thickness minus the washer thickness. Otherwise, if the steel plate and the washer go beyond the half grip length, then the thickness of segment three would be equal to the washer thickness plus the plate thickness minus the half grip length. That's how you determine these thicknesses. Now, when you look at segment four, you just take the grip length and you subtract all the other grip lengths you know, one, two, three, and then the bottom washer size. That makes it easy to find the thickness of segment four. Now, keep in mind, I think I might have misstated it earlier. We're looking for the thickness of each of these five different layers. It's the layer thickness. Now, the next thing we have to do is figure out the diameters that are associated with the frustum for each of these individual layers. We know their thickness, now we need to know their diameters. The diameter of the washer is one and a half times the diameter of the bolt hole, so that gives you 0.7. And five. The diameter of the steel upper plate segment, segment two, would just be equal to the diameter above it, that's D1, if you look at this logic here, plus twice T1 times the tangent of 30 degrees. Then when we go to segment three, if the washer plus T2 is less than the half grip, then you take D2, that's this diameter just above it, and add to that twice the thickness of layer two times the tangent of 30 degrees. Otherwise, you take D2, you add twice the thickness of layer two times the tangent of 30 degrees, and then you have to subtract off twice the thickness of layer three times the tangent of 30. So that's if it goes below the frustum geometric midpoint. The D for five is easy. It's one and a half times the bolt diameter. The D for four is just above that. It would be one and a half times the bolt diameter plus twice the thickness. So it would really just be equal to D5 plus twice the thickness of that washer layer times the tangent of 30 degrees. And that's how you do all of those layers. The next thing you have to be careful about is you got to assign elastic modulus to each of those. The elastic modulus for um, the washer is steel. The elastic modulus for the second plate, I mean segment two, is steel. For segment three, you have to have an if condition. You got to decide whether it's in the steel plate or it's in the cast iron plate. So you need a logic condition about the relative thickness compared to the geometric half length of the frustum. You go into the next segment, it's definitely gonna be the lower plate, and then finally the washer at the bottom. Now, the one thing that you should keep in mind is that when I calculate these stiffnesses, I am going to have potential divide by zeros in these. And so if certain terms are zero, if the thickness is equal to zero, then you simply let the K become zero. So if the thickness is equal to zero. If the thickness of that layer is equal to zero, let the K be zero. Otherwise, calculate the K using the formula over here. Then when you invert it, if it was zero, you've got to invert it. You've got to be careful. If the K was zero, let this one over K be zero. Otherwise, invert it. 
then you add all of those individual one over k's up, make the inverse, and that gives you the overall 